Topsail Island is a sleepy North Carolina beach. Not too many tourists, not too much growth. But there's something here, something that's saving the lives of one of our planet's oldest and most endangered animals, the sea turtle. Meet Boater, one very lucky loggerhead. Nearly cut in half by a boat propeller, Boater has undergone surgeries, treatments, and lots of loving care here at the Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehabilitation Center, known to most simply as the Sea Turtle Hospital. I wish I knew exactly what it was about sea turtles that so many people absolutely fall in love with them. I wish I could bottle it. I'd never have to worry about raising money again. Jean Beasley is the driving force behind this place. She and her all-volunteer staff care for more than 20 sick and injured sea turtles on a daily basis. Feeding, medications, cleaning turtles, and scrubbing tanks, it's all part of the deal. But this entire hospital happened sort of by accident years ago with one sick turtle. We got this injured turtle and um, we took it up to the veterinary school at NC State and they cleaned out its wounds, they got it all fixed up, and you know, it's time to leave. In fact, it was like 8.30 at night, and I said, well, we need to start back. Can we come back in a few days and see how the turtle is doing? And everybody stopped dead still and looked around at me and said, what do you mean come back to see it? We don't have any place to keep a turtle. Well, I didn't have any place to keep one either. <laughs> but the turtle came home with us. Now, Boater, Durham, Lefty, and countless other turtles owe their lives to Jean, the veterinarians, and the volunteers who care for them. And sadly, these turtles are here because of the things we are doing to their home. Many times I'm asked, what is the biggest problem for sea turtles? The human. Pleasure boats, pollution, even plastic bags and balloons that turtles mistake for food. They're all threatening these ancient ocean explorers. Some of our interns called me one day and said, get down here as fast as you can because there's something like a blood clot that this turtle is passing. So I jumped in the car and came running down and it was a red balloon. We've invaded and degraded the habitat of all of our marine creatures to the point that um, they are in crisis. And if they are in crisis, we are in crisis. The Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehab Center is open to the public every summer. It's a way to educate people about all seven species of sea turtles, all seven threatened or endangered. And you said this is one of the rarest kinds of sea turtles there is. Yes, this is the smallest and the most endangered of all the seven species. This is a Kemp's Ridley. Volunteers like Lisa are extremely busy with patients, but the future of all sea turtles is always a priority. You guys are also thinking about the next generation of sea turtles. Tell me a little bit about your nesting program. Okay, we start walking the beaches early spring. April and May, volunteers walk these beaches along the dunes here looking for mama tracks. Mama tracks, that's evidence that a mother turtle has emerged from the ocean, built a nest, and laid her eggs. A crucial move for their survival. They can have anywhere between 80 and 120 eggs. So it's really important that the nest stay preserved, because I mean, that's yes. 80 to 120 baby turtles. Yes, and there's a lot of speculation on how many actually make it to maturity level. Uh -huh. um, so right now, the latest I heard was one in 10,000. Environmentally, there are some issues that come across nests, I'm sure, as well, with people being on the beach, lights on the beach, that kind of thing. Yes, one of the things we do as the volunteers that are taking care of the nest, we do ask that um, if there is a nest 
between some of these houses with big bright lights that we ask them to please help us out and turn the lights down. We also have to do crowd control so that way none of the tourists or the public are bothering um, the babies that are going to see. Right. And then we also kind of do our part a little bit with the crabs and the birds, yeah. you know. And tell me, what, what's the big deal about having lights? Um, because we want the moon to be the brightest in the sky so that way they're going towards the water. Following the moon to their new home, it's something so beautiful, so instinctual. But the man-made obstacles that await these baby turtles are serious and they threaten their very existence. They truly are incredible animals. They've been on this planet for so many hundreds of years, millions literally of years. And uh, they survived all the cataclysmic events that wiped out the dinosaurs. And it is of such great concern to us who get to know them on a very personal basis that what we're doing is impacting their abil ability to, to survive in today's world. Jean is doing more than her share to save the world's sea turtles. We can do small things like using reusable bags instead of those plastic ones that hungry sea turtles find so tempting. Jean says that even that can make a big difference. Just recently, we walked over to release a turtle and there was a big pod of dolphin and all of our hearts were lifted just to see that. But um, you can't just see it and think it's beautiful. You've got to want to keep it. And then you have to take the steps necessary to make sure that those dolphins and those sea turtles that we were releasing can survive in today's world. As for Boater and all the other sea turtles here at the hospital, Jean has one wish, that they be released back into a cleaner, safer ocean. That is our goal, to get them back where they belong. And that's to be a real turtle again. Some sea turtles born on Topsail will actually return here years later, lay their eggs, and create the next generation of sea turtles. It's an instinct that's kept these guys going for millions of years, and one that many are doing all they can so that it continues for millions more to come.